Okay, in this presentation we are going to look at the gamma distribution, which is common, commonly used in financial maths, in actuarial maths, in insurance mathematics. Uh, partly as a way of aggregating random variables, uh, policy types. Uh, I'll get into that shortly, actually. It's a sort of, uh, it requires a little bit of uh, theoretical detail as to why it would be used. But I won't go into that too much here. So claim amounts at a certain type of policy are modeled as following a gamma distribution with parameters alpha equals 120 and lambda equals 1.2. Just as a quick remark, a lot of people might be familiar with that specified as alpha and beta. Okay. So I just have, it's essentially, I just have to sort of uh, stick with it. Now, uh, there's multiple ways uh, of specifying distributions actually. So I'll just be very clear about what I'm doing here shortly. Calculate an approximate, that means use a normal distribution, a value for the probability that an individual claim exceeds 120. So the probability of X being greater than 120 exceeds, that's, that word is very important, giving a reason for the approach that you would use. Now, um, I'm not going to go too much into the detail about what the gamma distribution is about, but it does actually come up in, finance, in actuarial maths and insurance quite a lot. The gamma distribution can be parameterized in terms of the shape parameter alpha and a rate parameter lambda. So this is the rate parameter, okay? Shape and rate, okay? Alpha and lambda. Now, and again, sometimes this might be denoted beta, okay? Now, just in case of multiple any confusion as to how you're going, we're going about things, just remember alpha uh, shape and rate, okay? Because just in case you see it written down some other way, using a different type of specification, and it just gets confusing. So shape and rate, alpha and lambda, shape and rate. So there we might sort of specify it like that. Now, just actually the expected value is alpha over lambda and the variance is alpha over lambda squared, okay? So that means in this particular instance that the mean, the, the expected value, the expected value here is 100, which is uh, 120 divided by 1.2 and the variance is 83.33, which is 120 divided by 1.2 squared. Now, so by the central limit theorem, since the gamma variable is the sum of 120 independent gamma variables, okay, that bit's very important there. Now, I sort of touched on it a little bit at the start, that it actually can be treated as the summation of uh, multiple variables, okay? That's really actually what clearly what I was getting at there. I should have been uh, getting at that, okay? That's, the, that's important there. Just actually touch upon that, um, what does it say here? Giving a reason for the approach you would use. So does, you are expected to sort of make some sort of statement along those lines there. That's really the gist of what I was getting at. Now, so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna specify the get this random variable X using the normal distribution. And we have the mean there, which is 100, okay? and the variance here, which is 83.33, okay, which is can be written as 9.128 squared, okay. Now, a key thing here, uh, gamma is, continuous is a continuous distribution, okay. That means no correction factor necessary. Now, you might see those in a couple of other videos I do, okay but not here because you'd use them if you're starting with the underlying variable is Poisson or bi binomial or negative binomial or something like that. In this instance, we don't need to do it because it is continuous. So we can actually just go straight in there, okay? And, you know, uh, work like on that basis, get the Z score, 120 minus uh, 100 over 9.12, Nine, okay, we get a z-score there of uh, 2.191, and then we get the, our probability there of 0.014, so 1.5%. So that's it really. Um, what are the key things there? Knowing the mean, knowing the variance, knowing how it's specified, shape and rate, or in case there's something another way of doing it, like shape and scale. So we're going for shape and rate here. 
and just actually justifying it uh, justifying our approximation there that that bit there that that bit's quite important there okay so yeah we'll leave it there that's great